I knew I wanted to be a writer from about the age of 11 or 12, mm. actually. I can't write anything without Jack the Ripper. <laughs> I don't know what that says yeah. about me. You, you've kept the book from then till now. If my desk is wobbly, you know, I need, <laughs> Just a, I need to <laughs> shove it underneath where it belongs. Okay. Hi, I'm Joshua Lim. This is the Library Report, where we look at all things bookish. In this episode, we invite a guest to give us a tour of their bookshelves and to share with us the contents of their home library. Hello, Mr. Neil Humphrey. Joshua, how are you doing, my friend? Good, thank come, you. Come in. Wow. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Welcome to my emporium of nonsense, Joshua. <laughs> it's crazy, but it's it's really nice. I, yeah. it's, it's very nice. It's expensive nonsense. Okay. After right. you, Joshua, lead on. This way? Yep, that's it. Okay. This is my massive apartment. Over here? Yep, in here. My Millennium Falcon. This is, this is where the genius happens. This is where I write all my books. So these are my books, some of my books. Some of my wife's. I must tell you, the Jodie Pickholtz are my wife's. There's nothing <laughs> okay. wrong with Jodie Pickholtz, but I just call it that. Okay. Yeah. Um, could you, do you have anything from like, from pre-Singapore days, when you were still um, in, in the UK, in East London, before you came over? When I was coming to Singapore, when I knew I was going to come to Singapore, I pulled out my own A-level study book. This is 19th century Britain, 1815, 1914. So it's the time of the white man taking over the world at gunpoint. So I studied history at A-level and at university. Mm. When I tell Singaporeans, I knew two things about Singapore before I arrived. I knew the Singapore sling and I knew Raffles Hotel a bit. I'd heard of it, that's it. They, they think I'm lying and I'll show you the proof. So this is a book of 100 years of British colonial history, right? Let me show you, we'll go to S, one reference. And it doesn't get the whole page, Josh. Let's not get carried away. It gets half of a single paragraph. Your country, my country now, got half a paragraph in an entire book of British Empire's history, 100 years. That's why I knew nothing about Singapore when I first arrived. Despite having a first class history degree, I knew nothing. So I figure, okay, when I knew I was coming to Singapore, I did what every traveler did in the 90s. I bought one of these rough guides. Now, as you can see, Singapore didn't even get its own book. It got <laughs> half a paragraph in the history book and in the travel book, it gets a section. Singapore was nothing like the Singapore depicted in this book. Mm. Nothing at all. You, you've kept the book from then till now. Purely for sentimental reasons, or <laughs> if my desk is wobbly, you know, I need, <laughs> just to, I need to shove it underneath where it belongs. Okay. Did you even intend to write a book in the first place? No. No, is it just writing for, for the fun of it? For Well, it was because I, I would acquire these stories. Things would happen to me. Like my very first night in Singapore, the friend I was staying with said, Opposite is a hawker center. He explained what a hawker center was. It's on the void deck, it's underneath the HDB block, tables, chairs, and so on. So at two, three o'clock in the morning, jet lagged, my first night, I go across to this hawker center, but I go the wrong way. Oh. But on this void deck, I still see tables, chairs, people eating. I remember so the story. I sit down, I, the story. I help myself to a few snacks. Okay. I see people looking at me like they want to kill me. And then of course, finally, I see this poor person lying in a coffin at the far end of the void deck. I remember this story. Eventually I realized it was a void deck funeral. Yeah. So I would accumulate stories like this, these cultural clashes between mm. East and West, mm. you know. And I would, finally I thought I had enough for a book. And I would tell Singaporeans that story and other stories and they'd find it funny. So eventually I bit the bullet, put them all together, sent them off to a publisher, and they said yes. All right. Mm. This writing thing just came about quite organically? Y yes and no. I I'm being slightly disingenuous when I say that because I had no idea of what I wanted to do in terms of career, mm. but I knew I wanted to be a writer from about the age of 11 or 12, mm. actually, because um, the books I was reading then as a kid, there was one particular author called Sue Townsend, who I absolutely adore, and is still a popular book to this day in Singapore across all libraries, right? So this is in many ways my literary bible, right? 
This was my favourite author growing up, Sue Townsend. This is one in the Adrian Mole Diary series. Without her, I probably wouldn't be a writer. I think that's fair to say. Mm -hmm. I read The Secret Diary of Adrian Mole, aged 13 and three quarters, when I was about that age, 12 or 13. And it changed my life, Joshua, because it was a book that was really about some dark issues, social commentary, divorce, being from a poor background, things that I could relate to on a personal level. But it was the funniest book I'd ever read in my entire life. I mean, laugh out loud, weepy-eyed funny, right? And then I had this eureka moment almost as a kid. I made this connection that this book is written in the first person as a diary of a 13-year-old boy going through puberty. And then I find out the book was written by a middle-aged woman. <laughs> it, it, it almost set off this light bulb in my head. Oh, that's how it works. <laughs> you know, you use your imagination and then you can take on any persona you like within reason. So I would try, even at an early age, to try to write uh, humorously. And that's when it started. Mm. And it all started with Sue Townsend. Right, Sue Townsend, I'm gonna thank her for that. Mm. So I thought, I want to take my style of writing, humorous social commentary that I developed through uh, Sue Townsend. And then I came across this book. I'm gonna have to stretch for this. Whoa, only you're trying on Oh, the classic, wow. here we go. Kept the original. Now I happened to read this. This was pure coincidence. I happened to read this book, Notes from a Small Island by Bill Bryson, when I was here, mm -hmm. not when I was in England. Even though it's a book about England, it's an American writing about England, right? That kind of outsider with an insider's perspective. Mm. So I thought, I could do that. I could take my humor, my social commentary, and what an American did about Britain, maybe a young Englishman can do about Singapore comparing two different lifestyles, two different cultures, working class England with Heartland Singapore. And so having read that book in Singapore, I was inspired to write this book. That one. Da, da, da. I even ripped off the title. <laughs> and then I moved into middle grade uh, books, fiction, about this secret undercover princess who has to leave her war-torn country to escape the civil war, and she ends up in a really run-down, working-class, heartland primary school, and she has to adapt. But she can't tell anybody that she's royalty, but at the same time, because she's royalty, she has these Taekwondo, Aikido, fencing skills <laughs> that help her. So it's, it, it's a good way for me to talk about issues that are important to me, which is anti-bullying, which is the rich poor divide and how both sides have to try to accommodate each other. So I talk about these really gritty social issues in a humorous way mm -hmm. in these books. Brings me right back to the beginning, Sue Townsend. Yeah, I was just gonna ask you. Is that's that, where it started. Is that your version of the secret yeah. diary? I absolutely, you nailed so me. So you're a middle-aged man like writing a, a, in a young girl's point of view. He's good, isn't he? He's good, isn't he? <laughs> hey, you've nailed me, that's absolutely right. It is the Sue Townsend in reverse. Right. Now I'm a middle-aged man writing as a 11, 12 year old girl in the first person, talking about social issues, bullying, uh, parental separation, some really serious stuff mm. that all kids, all kids from any background can identify with, but in hopefully a really humorous and quirky way. We've come full circle, Josh. <laughs> we have come full circle. So Neil, it's, it's been 10 years mm. since you've been back from Australia. What has been happening since? Well, I've been very fortunate. I've been a full-time writer for the most part, writing books, newspapers, magazines, and so on, but mostly books. And I wrote about returning to Singapore and how Singapore had changed. And then I started writing novels, uh, crime thrillers that were set in Singapore about a Singaporean Chinese detective called uh, Inspector Stanley Low, which I'm proud to say are now being uh, published all over the world. So I've taken my Singaporean Chinese detective from Topayu to across the world. My crime fiction here. Which you wrote three, right? You, you had also three novels. I, I do, yes, no. I did, yes. <laughs> so uh, my latest one is over there, uh, Bloody Foreigners. That takes my Singaporean detective to London. He is a uh, Singaporean inspector, right? Yes. You have to write in his language. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I know you've been in Singapore for, for 25 yeah. years already, minus the five years in Australia. But how do you get his language? How do you know that he's speaking authentic Singlish? It's a great question. Well, as you say, partly it's assimilation, 
I've been here for so long. But secondly, I'd be lost without this beauty. <laughs> The Coxford Singlish Dictionary. So I write over here. Uh huh. All okay. my books have been written here. All right. And uh, I'm very superstitious. If you want me to show you this, you see this? You see this here? This is a beer mat, right? Okay. A Jack the Ripper beer mat. <laughs> okay. Now I'm not sadistic, but Jack the Ripper is from East London, or was from East London, like I am. I bought this when I was 18 at university and all of my essays, my university thesis, everything was written with this on my desk. And I've had it in Topayu when I wrote my first books. I had it in Australia when I wrote my next books and I have it now. And it goes underneath my laptop. <laughs> so every single book I have ever written, Joshua, all 25 <laughs> books has had Jack the Ripper a Jack the Ripper beer mat under them. So you can't write anything without it underneath. I can't write anything without Jack the Ripper. <laughs> I don't know what that says about me, but there you go. Neil, thank you so much for sharing all of that with me. Um, I feel like I've gotten a very nice glimpse into your life from when you were young all the way till now. Um, can I take a shelfie together with you? And sure. Grab some books, yeah. Take my phone. Okay, here we go. Just this. One, two, three. Thank you so much for watching this episode of The Library Report. Do leave a like and a comment below to share your thoughts with us. If you liked what you saw, please subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.